everyone, it's Mrs. Malazada and today I'm wearing my high fashion art smock because I'm going to demonstrate something that's really messy and that's how to print your plate. Um, you'll notice that I'm wearing short sleeves, but if I were wearing long sleeves, this is the time to start pushing them up so that you're ready to work. Um, on, my on my workspace, I spread out newspaper, which you're located in your tall tables. You want to definitely put newspaper out. You also have a tray with all the materials you'll need. You're going to need plastic rectangles to spread for the ink. Ink popsicle sticks to scoop the ink, a brayer to roll out the ink, a wooden block to rub on the back, and there's extra newspapers. If you are of a class coming in after you, you'll return it, and then I'll show you how to do that. You'll return it so it's decent in the tray for the next class. If there's no other class you're using printmaking after you, I do have a slightly different cleanup procedure. Now, what I'm going to quickly show you is what to make sure of before you actually start getting your hands on messy and get into the ink. Make sure your name, mod, and table numbers are on your paper. Make sure it's your name, mod, table number, and an up arrow is on the back of your plate. And then you need to label your prints. Do you want them all the same direction? Or do you want to alternate, go up, down, up, down, like this student did? Or do you want it to be, a, a, since it's square, do you want it to rotate around in a circle? Those are all things that you, as the artist, will need to decide. Um, I think I'm going to keep mine all up for this, um, but if I wanted to do it a different way, that's fine, and that's, sometimes that makes some really neat interlocking effects. So you can see some here. Now what we need to do first though is, after you've labeled it, is to do a practice print. This is called an artist proof. And the whole purpose of the artist proof is to make sure not only did you carve everything deep enough, but also that you have a feel for how much ink so that it's not too light or not too dark. If you have too much ink, it'll fill in all your lines. If you have too little ink, it'll look really dry and faded. So you want to be able to learn to control your ink. If you're having a lot of printing material problems when you're using the artist proofs, please raise your hand and let me know. Don't just go through tons and tons of ink wasting it saying, oh, look bad. Let me know so I can help you with how to personally troubleshoot. But let me quickly show you how to do the artist proof. Um, I'm using just scrap paper for this and I have my newspaper spread out. What I need to do is put the plastic rectangle down. This everything should always have newspaper underneath. It is really, really messy. Now, I'm gonna just put the lid right back in here. You can see it's right in here so I don't lose the lid. I don't wanna lose it. Um, and I am scooping and putting it onto here. If I, it, now I'm the first person to use this rectangle. If someone else had used it, then I would not need to put so much out. I would only need a little bit more out each time. And if the person before me overranked it, then I may not even need to put out any at all. Now I am rolling it both up and down and to the side, and you'll notice it should sound sticky. Well, there's a squeak from the, there, but you can hear that sticky sound. That sticky sound means it's it's a nice amount of ink. It also should look fuzzy like a fleece. If it looks like it has big lines in it, like corduroy and real thick, that's too much ink. That'll fill in the lines in your plate. On the other hand, if it doesn't have that sticky sound and it looks really kind of dry, then it's going to be too light on your print, on your plate. So here I am. Notice I have newspaper underneath where I'm working. It is getting on my fingers, that's okay. There's that. It should look fuzzy. And don't forget to make sure you ink all parts of your plate. Now that's gonna be too light over there, so I need to put more ink. Make sure I get the edge of the plate. That's the whole point of the newspaper. And Sure, I got all the parts. Okay, now I'm ready to roll um, to. And I can leave it here for someone else. I'm leaving it like that, so with, instead of like that, right down. Now someone else can be using this. Now you'll notice it looks sticky. It has a little sheen to it. it looks a little fuzzy. 
Um, this may be light because it's my first print and that's why I'm doing an artist proof. The second print will be darker just because there's already some ink on here. Now how to print. You line it up in a, um, so that you're practicing when you have to line up on that one. And then you flip the whole thing over. Now you should be at this point at your seat with newspaper down so someone else can be using the inking station. Now I've turned the whole thing over and there's newspaper on my desk and I need to use this wooden block. This, I'm not hitting it, I'm not banging it, I'm not turning I'm just rubbing it on the back with the wooden block. And the reason we're using wood is because if we were using like a metal spoon or something, it would get really hot from friction. So what we need to do here though is keep it. You'll notice on the artist proof, you can start seeing the image coming through. And that's really helpful to know if you're printing it accurately. Common problem kids have is they only rub in the middle. They don't press all the way to the edges of the plate. Make sure you don't miss the edges of the plate. And, you should, and that way you can really see. The, now, if I have my finger down so I can check it a little bit and see how it's coming, if you, you don't want it to, your paper to slide. Corner a little bit more. Okay. Now, keep in mind this is printed. This isn't supposed to be perfect. Things that are printed are going to have a certain weathered effect. That's okay. That's part of the whole printing nature of the print. You're not trying to make something perfect like you would not if you were doing it on the computer. Now, here you can see there is my artist proof. And now I can look at it. I may decide I want to cut this a little deeper, but I kind of like the texture there. But if it was really bugging you, you may want to cut that a little deeper. And then you just wash and dry your plate off and um, ask me for a gouge and I would sign it out to you. Now I'm going to go ahead though and demonstrate how to print on my large one. Make sure to, you can sign your artist proof even. I'm writing my name and I can also write modern table number, and then this would go in the drawing rack um, according to table number, and they're all labeled by table number and class. Now, I'm ready to print on my large image. You definitely need your paper down because when you turn this over, and you still turn it over, all the chalk and ink and everything is going to get on there, especially if you've done one print. The second print is going to get wet ink on it. So I'm just going to give myself a little more space. Now this isn't quite enough ink, so this time it, I'm going to add a little more ink to it. Notice I didn't clean it up in between because someone else could have used it in that time, that's fine. But I added a little more ink, getting that thick squeak and making sure that it looks sticky and like a wet ink pad on my plate. I don't want it to I don't want it to look dry anywhere. Okay now making sure I hit everywhere. Okay. Oh, that's right that way. There we go. Someone else can use it. Now I'm back at my table. And this is why the arrow is important. I'm checking the arrow, checking it against my little key I made for myself, lining it up. If it doesn't line up perfectly, that's okay. We can always, when the whole thing's dry, cut it down. We'll have to cut off the bottom anyway. You notice these smudges and fingerprints? Doesn't matter. Your hands get too messy, you have a little spot to clean it up. Now, I need to, this is a very important step, make sure without letting the paper slide, I turn it over. You really need to turn, flip the whole thing over because you, it's the pressure that's really gonna make it print. So I follow the same steps as before, and I'm rubbing it on the back with the wooden block, making sure the image, I should be able to see it coming through, making sure I don't forget those edges. Remember I said that only a lot of times kids just press the middle. I wanna get the edges of the plate too. And I'm starting to see the image come. And this is always the fun part, getting to see what it actually looks like. Now, if a print doesn't come out and you're like, oh man, I had three really good ones, the fourth one's lousy. 
take a deep breath and you can always in the bottom area here you could always put the chalks down print one in the direction that you were missing and that's fine and we can on the paper cutter adjust it in fact I think one of these prints isn't the original print and yet I can't even tell which one it is sometimes it takes more than four to get four decent prints Now for the second print, next print, I would just follow the same thing and I'm just going to do this one but then I think you're all getting the idea that I would just continue it for all of them but I know some people are concerned well what do I do if it's all wet ink how do I do the next print. So I'm, notice I put the ink down again looking for this, making sure it's not too thick, not too thin. And at this point, you're going to be expert, so I'm going to do this fast. All right, perfect. Someone else is using it. I line it up, check my arrow, check my arrow. I want it in the same direction. I didn't want to rotate it. Okay, it's not quite straight, not a problem. If I try to move it, big problem. Okay, I got angles on Turn the whole thing over, rub it with the back with this wooden block, make sure to get my edges, and should be coming through. Make sure it's working. And there we go. And I will continue this for the other two prints. Now, at this stage, I'm ready to teach you though how to clean up. Maybe you didn't finish off four prints, the bell is about to ring, and you're saying, oh my goodness, I have to clean up. I will call you by tables when it's time to clean up. Um, I'll give you, um, if there is a class after you printing, how you will clean up, you will make sure this goes in this nice and neat like this with the lid, like this, like this, so they can easily get what they need. This would go right on top like this, piece of newspaper underneath, so that they will be able to print as well. Okay, in fact, with it sitting so tight, I'd probably just leave it like that with fresh newspaper underneath. Okay, so that they can easily get the materials that they need and you don't have to worry about washing them off in between. Now, on the other hand, if you are the last class of the ma of the day to print, then you have slightly different printing procedures. This would go in the trash can. So I'm just gonna put on my newspaper because my newspaper is gonna get thrown away if it's inky. If it's not inky, then we're green school and we will fold it up and we use it. Notice I'm putting the cap on tightly, returning that. Any clean materials that can be reused go nightly back in the tray, not thrown in there. But the messy stuff, we only have one sink. So with over 30 kids in this class, you will need to use the bucket spa system. So when I call your tables, you will bring the messy inky stuff over to the bucket spa. Now you will read, they're all labeled. So ink linoleum plates in here, brayers and plastic rectangles right in there. That way they can soak and um, later on in the day, they can easily be rinsed off. Make sure they're in the correct buckets. The messy newspaper stuff and materials this included in this possible stuff anything that's really messy and covered in ink that no one else would want you can see there's ink on here it's pastel on this one that gets and placed in the trash notice i'm not throwing shots in case this isn't your time for that just place it in the trash can if your desk is messy get a, a sponge from the sponge bucket wipe it off these wet prints Will all should all have your name mod table number. They will go in the correct shelf on the drawing rack for your table um, or the blinds, depending on your class, which is all labeled by table number. I recommend if it's wet down here, hang it upside down to clip it if you need to, um, so that you don't clip onto wet ink. Okay. Thank you and happy printing.